Greetings and salutations. I am Poetic Heretic, and this is an encounter with the Black Eyed Kids where the witnesses actually let them in. One very scary phenomenon that has captured the imagination, instilled fear, and generated a large amount of unsettling reports over the years is that of the menacing, extremely creepy Black Eyed Kids also called simply BEKs, along with their counterparts, the black-eyed adults. While each and every case is truly bizarre and unnerving, others go even further still, showing that not only are these mysterious entities good at scaring us, but that they on some occasions kill. Scattered amongst the many, many reports of encounters with the black-eyed kids are those that seem to show a rather malevolent tendency for witnesses to meet with tragic misfortune and death, further casting a wicked shadow over them. Black-eyed kids have been reported for decades, and generally follow a certain frightening pattern. The children, usually in pairs but not always, appear mostly in rural or sparsely populated areas. They typically appear as normal children from afar, but a closer inspection will reveal that they have a sickly, pale pallor to them, and that their eyes are completely dark pools of black, without any discernible iris or pupil, akin to the eyes of a shark. Although the tales may vary in their details, these mysterious entities are almost always described as exuding an intense wave of dread and panic, and their eyes are said to have a certain disturbing, sinister, and hypnotic quality to them. Almost every report of BEKs involve the children begging to be let into homes or vehicles. These requests often start out innocent and polite enough, usually gently asking for a ride or to use a phone, but not surprisingly due to their off-putting black eyes and clinging aura of fear the homeowner or driver will be reluctant to comply. This will cause the strange kids to become increasingly demanding, desperate, and foul-tempered sometimes even violent, such as banging or scratching on house or car doors. Some witnesses claim that the black-eyed kids have the ability to sow confusion and addle the minds of their victims, possibly to make them more suggestible and inclined to bend to their wishes. One commonality to every report is that they cannot force their way in unless specifically invited, and in most cases when the menacing children eventually give up, and leave, the victim is left exasperated, confused, and with the profound sense that they have just avoided some sort of dire fate. While this may all seem terrifying enough, the victim is usually left in one piece and none the worse for wear. But this is not always the case, and some more chilling accounts seem to point to these enigmatic creatures having the potential ability to do great harm. For instance, there are reports that seem to answer the question of just what exactly happens if one is to actually give in to their demands and let them in. One such report was apparently emailed by a frightened woman in a quiet rural town in Vermont to the website Weak in Weird, in which she claims to have let the kids inside, with disastrous consequences. The woman claimed that in 2015 she had been sleeping at home with her husband one night when there was a sudden, very loud knock on the front door of the small rural home at approximately 2 a.m. The woman at first thought it was possibly someone who had broken down or gotten stuck on the nearby unpaved road, as there was a snowstorm raging outside at the time. A look outside the window showed that the house's motion-triggered light was on and that there were indeed footprints in the snow, but there was no sign of any car on the road, nor even any evidence that any had recently driven by. The woman woke her husband, and they went downstairs to investigate, where they saw that someone was casting a shadow from outside of the front door. Still thinking it was someone in trouble, they warily opened the door to see two young children of around eight years of age, a boy and a girl, standing in the snow outside. The two children were described as not at all dressed for winter and sporting outdated, odd-looking haircuts, and both were gazing down at the ground. Interestingly, rather than worry for them and offer help, the couple immediately felt deeply unnerved and somewhat repulsed, and rather than letting them in out of the cold merely asked where their parents were, 
to which the two creepy kids replied, They'll be here soon. Despite the unnerving quality of the kids and their odd demeanor, the woman and her husband nevertheless became convinced that they must have gotten lost in the woods, and considering that they were woefully inappropriately dressed for the increasingly frigid weather, the husband and wife guided them in out of the snowstorm despite a strong nagging instinct at the back of their minds not to do so. Once inside, the kids were prepared something hot to drink and asked about what had happened to them and where they had come from, but every question was responded to with the kids simply saying, Our parents will be here soon. The woman began to notice that their voices had a sort of strange melodic quality to them, and also that for such young children they seemed to be not perturbed or nervous in the slightest to be in a stranger's house, which somehow added to a growing, gnawing sense of menace and fear she was feeling. There was also the fact that the family's cats, normally very friendly, were now hiding, and when she went to pet one of them it hissed and growled at her. The witness described what happened next thus. When I walked back into the living room, the kids were sitting on the couch as still as can be, but my husband was holding his head in his hands. I asked him what was wrong, and he just said that he felt very dizzy all of a sudden, but that he was fine. I turned back to the children to give them their cocoa, but when they looked at me, I gasped. It took everything inside of me not to drop the mugs and run away. When they looked at me, their eyes were completely black. They had no whites, just giant black pupils. When they saw that I was scared, they stood up and asked if they could use the bathroom. I tried to be as composed as I could be and showed them down the hall. They went into the bathroom together and I hurried back to my husband to ask him if he had seen their eyes. He had seen them too and said that it looked like his brother's badly bruised eyes after a car accident. We were in the middle of talking about whose children they could be when my husband's nose started to bleed. He'd never had nosebleeds as long as I had known him. I just knew inside myself that this had something to do with the kids in the bathroom and I started crying while I ran to get my husband some tissues. At this point, the woman claims that the power in the house abruptly cut out to leave them in darkness, which provoked a short scream from the husband. She then ran back towards the living room and was startled to see the two kids standing motionless in the hallway. After a moment of heavy silence, one of the black-eyed children announced, Our parents are here after which they went to the front door, opened it, and walked back out into the snowstorm without closing it behind them. Looking outside, the woman could see through the snow a dark car out on the road with two tall men dressed all in black, who stared at the house before getting into their vehicle and driving off. The power would blink back on not long after. Although this is already quite disturbing, things would only get worse for the couple. In the ensuing months, three of their cats went missing without a trace and another was found one day dead in a pool of blood in the middle of the living room floor, apparently killed by some sort of massive internal hemorrhaging. Even worse, the husband became afflicted with constant mysterious nosebleeds and was also diagnosed with a rare form of very aggressive and terminal skin cancer. The woman herself also claimed that she was experiencing frequent nosebleeds that had no discernible cause as well as sudden spells of dizziness, and that her health had dramatically deteriorated since her meeting with the black-eyed kids. She ends the mail with a haunting message, saying, I know that all of this is because I let the black-eyed children into my home. We've told everyone we could about the strange kids that showed up that night, but no one else saw them, and some laugh at how scared we were of the Mennonite kids, but we know what we saw. I wish my husband had never opened the door. Feel free to publish this as a warning to others about the black-eyed kids. My advice would be to lock your doors, call the police, and wait for morning. Don't make the same mistake that I did. That concludes this terrifying story. Don't forget to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.